welcome to the Louise Ginetta Art Gallery and Studio YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing seagulls at the seaside, a collage using papers and threads and then painted in acrylic inks and acrylics. I hope you enjoy and if you do can I please ask you to remember to like and subscribe and remember to press the notification button if you want to be notified when I upload future videos. Hopefully I'll be doing one a week. Thanks very much. Hi, and along with the list of things that you'll need is a piece of stretched paper. And again, the better quality paper you have, the better it will be. A nice heavy weight watercolour paper is perfect. It does actually get put under quite a lot of strain with all the glues and the textures that you add. So it can ruckle if it's not very good quality paper. There's a previous video on how to stretch paper. So if you go into my YouTube channel and look up how to stretch paper. I've got a load of papers together, I've got threads, I use cotton threads or natural fibres so that the, they absorb the paint when I apply it and I spend a good while preparing everything first. I get a load of papers and rip them up into shreds, into thin slices, I'll show you how I do it in a minute. And I also prepare threads. And here are my threads ready. I'll show you how I prepare these. These are the papers that I use. There is a lovely cotton rich rag paper that's got a very bleached white look, a very pure white look, because this is really good because it reflects light so nicely in the actual finished product. The different tonalities really affect the picture in the end. I've got cartridge paper. This has got a slightly browny, creamy look. And I've got different types of wallpaper. And this is just blown vinyl wallpaper. Again, it has a lovely texture. The bobbles and the things of it come out really nicely. So the next thing to do is to show you how I tear out the papers. I simply use my nails um, and just tear the papers into strips. Some of them tear relatively easily and they're torn because it creates such a lovely edge. So again, it's up to you how thin you want them. That one tears really nicely and has a really lovely edge. This is the cotton rich handmade Indian papers. And these ones, the thicker vinyl papers, Again, get a length that's going to just about go across your piece of paper that you've stretched and then tear them either with or against the mark but you can see it makes a lovely edge and that edge creates the sort of wave tops and it can be used so you want to create you want to have some of this edge on it so for the threads, I get lengths that I know are going to cross the width of the piece of paper that I've stretched and I actually separate these off um, because I like the sensitivity of the thin threads. You can use them as they are, but I don't like, or I don't always like, the evidence of the, of the twist within it. Sometimes I do, so I'll try that again. I've got a number of different types of threads here. I've got a cotton crochet thread. I've got a cotton, um, what's this for? It's for making piping cord and it's cotton based. I've got bits of garden string. Um, I've now got dishcloth crocheted threads of yarn. I will put these in the description below as well. I get lengths that I know will go across the piece of paper and then I actually separate them off so I take threads out of them because I don't actually like the way that it twists or I don't always like evidence of the twist so I take them apart. I get a whole lot of these things ready and bits and pieces that I think are going to be interesting as texture. For the paint all you need is black, cream, white and blue 
And this is just to prepare for making the seagulls. So you want two pieces of paper or a couple of pieces of paper. Oh, I have. You don't need two. You can just have one. Water and the paints. And the idea is just to do it roughly, really roughly. You're going to be cutting your little seagulls up out of this. Um, and it doesn't really matter. You just want sort of nice gestures at this point, And then the definition comes at the end once they're cut out. So just a little bit of grey and a bit of white. It's too much grey because I want it mainly white. Otherwise they tend to look a bit um, boring, dark. You want it to look like the light's coming off them. You see that's just gone too grey. Right, let's go again. What I'll do is I'll work on that when you're not looking. But I like quite a lot of paint on at this point because it gives it lovely texture, doesn't it? This is a mixing white. It's not very nice, actually. But in any case, so got the idea. When, and you'll see when we actually get the seagulls done. That was just a mixing white. I'm just going to get my pure white out and you'll see the difference. There, that's better. And I am just, as you can see, bunging it on everywhere. OK, this is by no means the finished product, so... Don't worry about it too much at this point. Put your seagull papers to one side to dry. There you go. <laughs> right, get your big piece of paper that's been stretched on your board. Oh, the other thing I didn't tell you about is the glues. So I use a pH neutral glue. It's a paste that you add to water and mix and it goes into a gluten substance. You can get it from all craft suppliers. It's water-based, pH neutral, and you mix it like wallpaper glue. I will um, edit in how you do that, but mine's already mixed up. Now this is another really good tip. You apply the glue with a paintbrush onto your paper. So it's really, really easy. You just get a good, clean paintbrush and you apply the glue into the paper and you can actually push the, glue, the papers and things around with this. That's a really good tip. Right, so you put some glue onto the paper and the idea is you stick the tissue paper down onto the glue and then sort of mould it into nice shapes. Don't worry if it's all gloopy because it dries in the end. So you put paper, um, glue onto the paper and onto the back of your tissue paper, turn it over and then arrange it so that it looks like sort of, I don't know, the sky. <laughs> and I'm going to just begin to allow it to be um, the sea as well. Just let the sky flatten out so that it sort of starts the idea of the sea. So the idea is these are clouds and then this becomes a little bit more flat. And then you start introducing your threads. So this is the beginning of your sea, the, the horizon of your sea. And you work down from that line. I mean, if you want to be precise, you can measure from the bottom of your picture so that you know your horizon is flat. But of course, horizons do actually go up slightly in the middle and come down at the edges. You don't need to put that in. And then it's just a question. And then it's just a question of picking up whichever papers you think are going to work. I tend to think that the background is a bit flatter. So maybe you don't want all the sort of detail of something like that. Maybe that's to come later. But of course you flatten it out with your painting as well. I have got some really nice flat ones here. I think I might come bung in a couple of these. These were threads off when I cut up some paper, you know, with a guillotine. So they're really thin slithers of paper. Look, so I'm just gonna start bunging them on. And then I'm taking it right to the very edge of the paper, right over the edge. Um, and I'm gonna bring in some other threads, just for interest's sake. There's a piece that I don't want. And then you can, rip up thin shreds of tissue paper and paste them over the top. There's so much glue on there, they just sit on top of it. And it really is just to help stick those down. But really, you don't have to do that. It all does stick down in the end. It also makes it disappear into the horizon a bit more. There are little ruckles and things 
in the strings and that's fine because it will just look like waves in the distance. So little ruckles in the distance and then as you pr progress forward they become bigger waves and movement. So straighter in the distance and then more as you come forward. And there you can see what happens to the cloud type look of the um, sky. Any air pockets disappeared, it all flattens out when it dries. Right, so I'm going to keep going, getting threads to come through. That one's got a lot more texture in it, so I'm going to bring it further forward. And again, just use the strings to the best advantage of them. You just get your wallpaper paste and shove it on. They don't all have to go straight across either. They don't all have to be straight. Vary the type of thread that you use and the way you lay it on. It's another piece of that paper that I had. A really nice thin piece which I can stick on top of the other bits. And then of course it's up to you what you use. These are nice. There's some with knots and stuff in it. Let's get it done with the glue. As you go forward, you can start thinking about adding um, more textures because obviously, for perspective, the more detail there is in the foreground, the more blurred the background is, that gives it a dimension, gives it distance. So not only does the colour of the paint, which is less vivid in the background and more vivid in the foreground, but also the uh, detailing. More detail in the foreground, less in the background. So you're thinking about that as well. So that's just a torn up piece of paper going down onto a very gluey surface. And if you bring in lovely colours here, in fact I want that underneath. a bit boring that one but it won't be when it's when this one's on top it'll just create a funny straight line underneath it which considering it's still in sort of distance is all you need and you really don't need to worry too much you don't need to fuss too much or think too much there's a nice piece just in front of me see this bit they there's a square end Try not to finish on the square end. So just take off a, a piece that's less square and take it across and then make it dis any square ends can disappear behind other bits of paper. Make sure there's enough glue on there that it's all going to stick down. And of course keep remembering to put in your threads as well. And really that's actually I'm going to just shove that in. It's a, a twisted one. You know like I said I didn't like. But we'll see, we'll just see what they like, because some of them are nice. And just get it on. Another, a piece of tissue paper again, just to make sure things are going to stick down. But you really don't need it, it does stay. Vary the textures and threads you're putting on. And make sure you bung enough glue on it as well. And you can start lifting them through more like wave things as you go on if you want to. It's a nice piece. And you can lift bits under and over if you want them to be shown. This stuff is nice. It was really difficult to tear but it's handmade paper. But I think it will be an interesting texture. It'll be very much sort of the top of the waves. So I'm going to bung a bit of that in. And then that will show the top of the wave. And there's some more threads. Threads in there. I just like the threads in them. I like the complexity of the textures. I don't shout at you. Obviously a horrible little twist or a, a lump that you don't like. Get rid of it. You know, like a, if there's a... A little um, loop in the thread. My eyes can see it when it's finished, so I don't like it. That's lovely. That's got some really nice textures in it. Sort of things that will really add to the all-over effect. Get rid of that rather horrible texture of that uh, handmade papers by just adding other bits. Some 
So you're really, re you know, revealing quite a small amount at a time. And everything, because you're layering stuff on top of each other, everything um, also appears to be going into the distance. And the waves appear to be rolling towards you. This one's a good one because it's so highly textured. What did you like that there? You can put that in. All the lovely marks and stuff that the edges make are just beautiful. I'll put more threads in. And now you can start making the threads be a bit more active because you're beginning to build up the forefront of the sea where the waves are crashing onto the shoreline a bit. Just beginning to. And again, just really doesn't matter how it goes. It'll just work. This thin piece that I can take across. And again, they don't all have to go straight across. And I quite like that there. So finishing off halfway. And it, again, it doesn't finish off as a square end, it finishes off as a rounded, organic looking end. Actually, that's a nice paper. I'm just going to use it to pick out some of the wave crests, because I quite like that texture. So I'm lifting some of the waves just to bung it behind a bit, and it'll just come out as funny bits of texture. The waves obviously are bigger in the foreground as well, and recede into small little waves in the background. There's quite a lot of texture there, so I'm not going to need that. one again some really mad textures proper blown vinyl I'm going to put that straight across right what well, next a bit of lighter colored stuff uh, because the white paper you know when you do watercolors the white of the paper creates a luminosity in itself so that when the sorry I can't do it at the same time as tall can I so when the pigment is translucent the white of the paper becomes very vivid if the paint that you apply is solid is matte is opaque then the white doesn't come through but you can really use the bright white of papers of the paper itself to create tonality but I want a narrower piece for this one so I'm just gonna tear a big piece of got in half and I don't want it to go all the way across so again I'm just gonna bring in a bit like this oh and I want some threads in there too forgetting to put my threads in aren't I I just like the threads yep. these are the cotton thing from the inside of the piping cord stuff they're always really nice and I like that one with the knots in they're nice as it go, goes along some of the pieces of papers will stretch a bit just ease them back into position and now you can go a bit more bonkers because you're getting towards the forefront of the picture and where maybe more detail and you can get some more mayhem into the movement of the threads oh, I think I want some more texture there. serious stuff There I have actually ripped this paper so that it's against the grain, not with it. In fact, I think this one's got a bit of a more haphazard grain. But that would be nice because it would look like the insides of waves. So I'm going to put that in there. Again, don't let that edge show, that horrible square edge, because it's very unorganic, inorganic, whatever you say. Imagine again, that's against the grain at the square end um, this is obviously too solid here some shapes to break it and these can be the waves beginning to fold onto the beach and now more just general mayhem because this could be where the waves are, are breaking a bit on the beach that's about it, really. I always say that, don't I?
you're beginning to make it look like waves breaking over the beach. And this is really nice because you just overlap some of the thread. And then that's the, another bit that's just breaking onto the front of the seashore. And then curl them round and twist these and make the patterns that the edges of waves make. You know when they crash on the seashore? And just build up the pattern with a few threads. There you go, that'll do for that. That then has to dry and I'll show you how to paint it afterwards. The paper might appear to ruckle at this point, but when it's dry, it'll dry flat. I just thought I'd let you see close-ups of some of this, just so that you know the sort of effect that I was going for. Um, particularly on this forward bit, I've just twisted and turned the threads to make the waves as they crash onto the seashore. And there's a bit at the bottom here where it's really twisted and knotted. Um, and I can add more to that as well. So I got a book on seagulls or on birds, seabirds, and then I did a few sketches can you see that? The, yeah. Then I did a few sketches of these birds, just the outlines, I just want their shapes. Quite abstract, all you're doing is suggesting their shapes and movements. And there is an element of um, exaggeration, just because it looks nice. Once you've traced the seagulls, the next stage is to transfer your tracings onto the back of the paper that you painted with acrylics. So this is 300 gram or GSM watercolor paper. And then you simply cut it out with a decent pair of scissors. And the detail doesn't have to be exact. A good thing to do is don't try and cut it out with all the detail. Cut out the general shape of it first and then go into the detail. So I sort of cut near the detail, but don't worry about it too much at this point, and then go into it. So just build up the detail, cutting around the bits where you can actually access it easy enough because otherwise you're just struggling too much. So I'm going to actually just cut out that just to show you what I mean. And then go in and cut out the detail. And you can tidy it up at the end. And also, it isn't that important. You know, you just want a general sort of seagull shape. They're quite abstract really. And there you go. There's the one without its head, which is quite nice too. I might use it, bung a head on it. So the idea is that you're going to now paint your seagulls just to bring out a bit of definition and to add to the picture. Um, it'll allow you to follow the sort of shape of the seagull as well because all you've got is a very basic shape. So just get a little bit of grey for, say, the back of the wings. Um, and then you can say, oh, it's a black-headed seagull, so give it a black head. Tip the wings. Tip the wings and tip the tail. And there you've got your little seagull put them to one side to dry. I said do that on each one, just bringing out a tiny weeny bit of definition in each one. So again for this one, you just want to think how to define those wings. And that's enough. There you go. And let it dry. And the next one, I'll only do a few for you, I won't bore you to tears with it. That one again, 
underneath there, through there, I think we've done one like this, the tips, the end of the tail, and then his little head. And that's it. So the next bit is painting it. We've got the dried collage here, um, the paper has dried flat, and I'm going to use lovely acrylic inks to paint it with. There will be a list of the colours in the description below. For this demo I use acrylic inks and I prepare them by putting little drops into nice shot glasses and little containers because I dilute them, I don't use it pure. The pigment is so intense. So I'm going to get a couple of blues, a red to make a purple and a purple and some lovely browns and ochres and two greens. I put the, the colours in the shot glass and I add a bit of water to each one to dilute the pigment some. And along with the acrylic inks, I also use acrylic paints. I've got the acrylic paints ready from yesterday and they're still wet in this brilliant little container. We just need a bit more white. And I'm going to do the sky in the actual thick acrylics. Are you ready? I've not got anything special, just one inch flat, a centimetre flat, and a couple of finer paintbrushes. Right, here goes. I'm going to start with a sky, put a load of white on, just smidge it on. There's an air bubble come out there. So I'm putting a lot of white on white and grey but I do want it to be a summer's day but I want it to have some um, life, some interest. What's really nice is you can just rub it over and into the grooves and it makes these lovely, it makes these beautiful marks because of the textures. And just bring that down over and onto your horizon because it would pick up the colour of the sky and it would be a lovely, oh there's one that's come off, it would be a lovely dull colour on the horizon, you know, it's faded colour in the distance on the horizon. acrylic inks get some acrylic inks and start adding them in and this is the fun part because it just sits into it and you can do both so don't be shy about using all the things at your disposal and honestly you hardly need any I love a bit of um, I've got some ochre there. I love a bit of ochre in the sea. Because the sea isn't blue, is it? <laughs> oh, look, it's so beautiful. So beautiful and so easily done. I just want a bit more white acrylic paint. I'm just going to bung a bit of white into my palette. I should have a um, palette knife but I haven't at the moment. I'm just doing it quickly. Right. So you can use white acrylic or you can use the white of the paper. It, you start putting it on just seeing how it goes really. How it all sits on it and what colours you're going to use. I mean, that's a lovely, nice, bright seaside colour at the moment. I just want to 
make sure you can actually see all that. I've put in some ochre. I'm just putting in a lovely bit of... It's like an earthy red. An earthy brown, sorry. And it's just to add interest. I'm going to go a bit more Corellian blue. underneath the sand and I don't really want much here I want it just suggesting it in fact I might just go a bit because I don't want that to be the most important part Sides of waves in where it might crash. But that is it. And then just let it be. But remember, it will dry paler because the pigments will, the water goes, doesn't it? But that's about it. We've got a lovely little seascape. Just in the sky, there's a pinky colour just in the sky. Just because the sea will reflect the colours in the sky. So I've just got a bit of the brownie colour. I'm just going to touch over the horizon. There you go. Okay, then the next bit, when this is dry, just stick on your seagulls. So there's the finished piece without the seagulls. I might add a few more darks, but it's up to you to add whatever you like to your composition. I'm also just going to show you how to stick on the seagulls very quickly. So get your seagulls and just start to arrange them onto your composition and see how you want them to go and like the smaller ones could go in the background, the bigger ones can come to the foreground. Some of them might appear upside down, but you can change where you can change which side the head is on. So just see what, where the little flock is going to come from and go. What's nice is if you actually overlap some, so that it looks a bit better. So say you've got that like that, and that like so.
It sort of gives them a bit more movement, I think. Let's try to make them turn up, I think. And then the bottom here needs a bit more work, actually. It's sort of where the, the waves dampen the front of the sand. It just tends to be a bit darker on there. Or on the underside, like a shadow almost of where the... All you need now is a good quality wood glue and some glue on the back. Remember it'll dry clear so don't worry about it too much and start to build up your little composition. And they won't stick down immediately, so just give them a bit of a chance to settle a bit and then press them down with your fingers. There you go, they're all on. Finished. I hope it's of some use to you. All the best. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And please, if you did, would you remember to like and subscribe and press the notification button so you can be notified when I upload future videos. Also, if you have any questions or queries or anything you would like me to cover in the future, please put it in the comments below. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. All the best.